What's up guys, welcome to Supercars of London and the final day of our holiday down here in Sulcombe and the quick return of the Audi A1. I've been down here in Plymouth sorting and working with Audi to get this car fixed so that I can drive it home. And today is Saturday, this video is going live Sunday. It is a very, 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 very exciting time on Supercars of London. This week, I'm not only announcing a European road trip with a lot of cool friends, but announcing a brand new car. My Lamborghini replacement is going to be the next video on Supercars of London. So if you haven't subscribed already, click subscribe, get these notifications coming in because the car I'm so excited about announcing I've been up all night last night the night before I'm just getting so so excited it feels like Christmas and this is a car that I can't wait to announce to you guys today we are heading back to sunny Watford it is a beautiful day here and I'm going to answer some of your questions of the Q&A about daily drivers which I announced on Twitter Instagram and YouTube so let's quickly show you what I have done to this car before we set off and probably answer the number number one question that was asked which was how was our, how was my reaction to the tree hitting the car but also how much did it cost to repair now because the tree fell on the car we only had about three or four days to actually fix the car so I prioritized all of the damage to make sure that the car was in a drivable and legal condition to drive home so the only thing that we have done is I've got a brand new tailgate and rear window to the car the dents still exist unfortunately so we've got the big dent here on the side a few dents up here on the uh, three-quarter pillar here but I have had the new tailgate and window replaced so there's no badges at the moment dub customs will sort out the black Audi and the black A1 badges um, and then I'm going to get the dents removed and luckily Audi were able to get the tailgate and rear window in time for it to all get fixed today which has been an absolute dream come true and to answer the question on how much did this repair cost it cost me about 1100 quid so the tailgate was around 450 500 quid the window plus the installation was about 300 quid plus the labor plus the paint this is all audi this is all up to the audi factory standard so it is a complete swap or straight swap to what i had before so it is exactly the same audi approved repair we are now ready to hit the road back to Watford. As soon as I get back, I'm going to be replacing the spoiler, which was split in half there, and also pop these dents out, which wasn't the biggest issue. The big issue was obviously the rear window. It needed replacing because it was shattered and I couldn't have driven home without it. So that is replaced. Let's jump in the car and get on the road. Before we start the Q&A, let's just take a moment to check out a Jaguar F-Pace getting cleaned at the Tesco car park. That could be a good daily. So let's kick things off with modifications on the Nuke. And Sam Bosworth asked an interesting one. If I could pick one modification that I could get for free on this car, what would it be? Okay, it's not really a modification, or probably seen to be a modification in the world of cars, but I'd quite like a panoramic roof, and I know that sounds weird, but on a day like today when the sun is kind of shining, it's the best you're going to get in England, I think a panoramic roof would be a really nice touch. The things like an exhaust system would do absolutely nothing to this car because it's silent. The engine is completely silent, um, an exhaust system really won't do anything. If I upgraded the wheels, then the ride quality would would get a little bit worse if I lowered it a little bit again the ride quality would get a little bit bad but for these sorts of cruises a panoramic sunroof would be beautiful but there's a range of, range of wild track in burnt orange or whatever the color was called anyway question two jumping straight into the deep end we've got Jordan Warren who has asked out of the three top hot hatches the RS3 A45 AMG or the BMW 135i. What would I have out of the RS3 A45 and the BMW 135i? I haven't driven the BMW, but out of those three as brands, BMW is at the bottom of the list. Not because I don't like BMW, it's because I prefer the Mercedes and the Audis more in every single product range. I think Having driven the RS3 and the A45, I would take the RS3 because it sounds a little bit better. 
not taken away from the fact that the AMG doesn't sound good. And it's a little bit more understated. The AMG, you can spec it with the track pack, the spoiler, the front canards, and the big, big, beefy body kit. I think I'd prefer the RS3 understated look. Black it out, and um, I think that would be pretty cool to have, so RS3. Toby98 has asked a question that I think a lot of you guys have asked, but also I saw a lot in the comments, and see quite a lot in the comments anyway, and a car that is so well loved, did I consider the Audi S1 before I bought this, the A1 S line? I did. I considered and drove the Audi S1, which is a real pocket rocket. There is a video on my channel about a year ago of me driving an Audi S1. The problem that I had when I came to looking for a daily was that you cannot buy the S1 with the S-Tronic gearbox. It only comes in manual, which obviously is for the pure petrol heads that love the engaging gearbox. But for me, driving around Watford, driving in and out of central London, a manual gearbox just wasn't something that I wanted on the checklist. So as cool as the S1 is, it would be even cooler if it came with the S-Tronic gearbox because it is quicker. It's quicker than a human. This gearbox is quicker than a human. Dewey Smith 2 on Instagram has asked, will I ever get my A1 lowered? And I would agree with so many comments out there when I do post pictures of this car that the ride height is quite high. And there have been some moments where it looks a little bit like the Q3. However, the one mistake that I did with my R8 when I got the R8 was that I went all out and lowered it, put bigger wheels and lowered it, which absolutely ruined the ride quality of the R8. So it didn't take me long to put the stock suspension back on. And after that experience, I haven't thought about lowering any other car unless someone can find me out there some very comfortable springs that will lower this car but still give the same ride quality that I'm able to get with this car. I won't lower it and I know that sometimes it does sit high and the wheel arch gap is quite big but it's something that I'm putting up with because I do not want to compromise the ride quality especially on a daily which I spend so much time in. Stevens 458 has asked how much did the nuke conversion cost? I love the fact that the nuke has stuck and is the nickname for this car. And it's probably only been enhanced by the fact a tree fell on it. So the conversion that Dub Customs did, they wrapped the outline of the front grille in black. They put the black Audi badges in the front and the rear and also made all of the badges, the A1 at the back black as well. We also tinted it up so that it comes like the night pack in the Mercedes brand or the black edition in Audi. And then we also powder coated the wheels in gloss black as well. So the wheels are 75 pound each, which come to 300 pounds per, no, 300 pounds for all four wheels. The D-Chrome is around 200 pounds and then the tint is 50 pounds per window. And I did one, two, three, four, five. So 250 pounds plus 300, 550 pounds plus 150 for the D-Chrome. 700 pounds for the complete blacked out effect. Luckily, the car was black when I bought it. It was already specced, Audi had already specced it. And once I bought it, I just wanted to add my own touch to it, which I think makes this car look even better. So that is the conversion cost on the new. Fet 2008 has asked, if I had Shmi 150's money, what three cars would I buy? So he's got a McLaren 675LT, so let's say that costs 400 grand. His daily, the Ferrari FF, 150 grand, 550 grand. And then he's got the track weekend weapon, which is the GT4. Let's say market value is 100 grand on that car. So we've got 650,000 pounds to play with. Let's start with an out and out crazy car. I think I'd have to go with an F12. I think that is just an amazing car. I'll probably put a Novitec exhaust system on it, spec it up to the max, which is around 300 grand. This question's quite difficult with, because if I answer it with any of the, the, the slightly cheaper supercars other than an F12, it could potentially be my next car. So, I would say an RS3 is the daily. 
I might get a used F12 at 200 grand, use that as my Hoon car. RS3 is the main daily, and I'll buy a Lexus LFA for 380 grand, 350 to 400 grand as my out and out supercar. Lexus LFA for the sound and the comfort. F12 for the, the daily stuff, and then the RS3 when I need more than one passenger. Hope that answers the question. I think that's quite good actually. F12, LFA, and RS3. I like it. Levin Bates on Twitter has asked Would you recommend the Audi A1 as a good first car? I would. I think this is one of the best cars that you could probably start learning to drive in. It's so easy to drive. If you've done your test in a manual car, I would still probably lean towards getting a manual just to continue getting used to driving with a manual and finding the biting point. But definitely, this car is very, very good and then obviously everything's under warranty. If anything goes wrong, you've got everything covered, so the running costs on this car are incredibly cheap. The one thing that I probably would say is that insurance is actually quite pricey. This probably answers a couple of other questions about insurance. The insurance is only a little bit less on this car than it was on my 2008 Audi R8, which is a 4.2 litre V8. And I know that insurance for new drivers is quite expensive, so do an insurance quote before you buy this car because it might be really expensive. I'm not entirely too sure. I bought this car six months ago having driven for six or seven years and it was still quite expensive. So yeah, check that one out. But this is a very, very, very good car. I think that is probably the best question to end on. Would I recommend this car to buy? Of course I would. This has been one of the best purchases that I have done in the last 12 months. It has been an absolute beast when it wants to be. It has just been the coolest daily to have. I would be very sad to see it go, if it was to go. Right now I'm gonna focus on repairing it back to all of the official Audi standards so that this car is as good, if not better, than when I picked it out from Audi Watford. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully I've answered the questions that you may have had asked. Thank you for everyone who submitted your question and I look forward to seeing you for the next video on Supercars of London which is going to be the announcement of my Lamborghini replacement. So this is one of the biggest videos of 2016 and then I'm going to be announcing the road trip where we are going and what we are doing on the next video from that and then I think I fancy a McDonald's. So with that all happening this week I think it's time for me to say goodbye I look forward to seeing you very very soon on Supercars of London thank you for watching hopefully you've enjoyed this video and the last video of the review of this car and if you are considering an A1 definitely go and check them out at your local Audi dealership because they are epic and go and drive one as well manual and the S-Tronic and tell me which one you prefer in the comment box below cheers guys